When it comes to building a PC for Blender, the key is knowing which parts really matter for your workflow and how to balance your budget. This video won't be about physically assembling a PC. If you want that, Linus Tech Tips and other tech channels have excellent and detailed guides on this, which I highly recommend checking out. Anyway, let's start with the heart of your system. The processor, or CPU, Blender uses the CPU mainly for viewport performance. Things like moving around your scene, caching renders, preparing data, and handling tasks that require sequential processing. Blender utilizes the CPU for a wide range of tasks like 3D modeling, animation, and physics simulations. You can render with the CPU, but generally rendering on your GPU is faster. I've done some research to try and offer you the most accurate information, but if I accidentally have any outdated information or get anything wrong, please let me know in the comments below. That would really be helpful. Anyways, Blender's workload is a mix of single core and multi-core tasks. So you want a CPU that balances having enough cores with strong individual core performance. More cores mean more multitasking ability, but usually lower speed per core. And fewer cores mean faster cores, but less multitasking. Brands like Intel and AMD have tiered options, like Intel's i5, i7, and i9 or AMD's Ryzen 5, 7, and 9 series. So pick a CPU that fits your budget, but aim for a good balance, ideally with at least eight cores and a clock speed above three gigahertz for decent responsiveness. Now, the GPU, or graphics card, is arguably the most important piece for Blender. This is what handles viewport rendering and final renders, particularly when using cycles. This includes tasks like converting the scene into an image or animation, which are computationally intensive. While the CPU also plays a role, the GPU significantly accelerates the process, especially for complex scenes, and it's Cycles rendering engine that utilizes parallel processing. So your graphics card needs to be powerful. Nvidia and AMD are the main players here, with NVIDIA's RTX series being the safest bet right now because Blender has had the longest and best support for NVIDIA cards, especially for features like CUDA cores and ray tracing with optics. So look for a card with a high clock speed and plenty of CUDA cores if you go with NVIDIA. VRAM or video RAM is crucial too. It's the memory on your graphics card that holds your scene data. If your scene doesn't fit in the VRAM, Blender has to use slower system RAM, which hurts performance. For most users, 8 to 12 gigabytes of VRAM is a good target, but if you're working on very complex scenes, the more VRAM the better. Now, the system memory, aka RAM, is just as important, but serves a completely different role than VRAM. RAM affects everything in Blender modeling, sculpting, texturing, physics simulations, rendering, you name it. When you run out of RAM, this causes crashes, especially when your projects have a lot of details and so complex scenery. But with more RAM, you can work on bigger, more detailed projects without constantly managing what's loaded. For beginners or hobbyists, eight to 16 gigabytes is a great start, but I'd recommend getting 32 gigabytes or more especially for those doing heavy simulations and building complex scenes with Blender. When choosing RAM, DDR4 is still common and reliable, and it's still widely used. DDR5 is the current standard for new systems and offers significant performance improvements. It's newer, faster, and more power efficient, though it's not yet widely supported or necessary for most Blender users. Prioritize getting enough RAM over the higher speed, but avoid going too slow. Now, your motherboard is the backbone that connects everything. It needs to be compatible with your CPU and RAM. And ideally, you want one that supports future upgrades like DDR5 RAM or higher tier CPUs, so you don't have to replace it again soon. Look for enough slots for your GPU and RAM and make sure it supports M.2 NVMe SSDs, which are super fast storage drives that help Blender load quickly. Speaking of storage, 
Having a fast hard drive can drastically improve Blender's performance, especially when opening projects or loading textures. The best setup is to have an NVMe M.2 SSD for your operating system and Blender software, and a larger SSD for storing your project files and assets. NVMe drives are small, fast and efficient, while a standard SSD offers a good balance of speed and capacity. Avoid traditional spinning hard drives if you can, as they're much slower and will bottleneck your workflow. Power supply and cooling are often overlooked, but critical. Your power supply needs to provide enough wattage for your CPU and GPU, especially if you're using high-end parts. Underpowered supplies cause crashes and instability. Cooling keeps your system running smoothly during long renders. Blender can push your PC hard for hours, so pick a case with good airflow and at least a decent CPU cooler. Speaking of cases, if you like the case in this video's thumbnail, it's called the Fractal North case. One of my favourite PC cases, honestly, which I think may just be the prettiest PC case ever produced. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Bigger cases generally dissipate heat better, and many come with pre-installed fans, so you don't have to worry about buying extra ones. Now, before you start picking specific parts, let's talk about how to avoid just guessing. Blender has a fantastic resource called Open Data. It's a website where users share benchmark results for different CPUs and GPUs. Instead of relying on marketing hype or random forum posts, you can see real numbers showing how different components perform in Blender. The site has charts that list the top CPUs and GPUs with higher values, meaning better performance. If you're stuck between two graphics cards, just look them up on Open Data and compare their scores. You can also dig deeper and compare different operating systems or see how performance has changed over time. It's a great way to make an informed decision and get the most bang for your buck. To make this easier, I recommend using tools like Build My PC, PC Part Picker, or Micro Center's PC Part Picker, which help you select compatible parts and show you community builds specifically for Blender, so you can see what others are using and how much it costs. For example, you can filter GPUs by NVIDIA RTX 30 or 50 series, pick CPUs from Intel i5 to i9 or AMD Ryzen 5 to 9, and then the tool only shows motherboards and RAM that work with your choices. This takes the guesswork out of compatibility and helps you stay within your budget. For a budget build, you might start with an NVIDIA RTX 3060 or 4060 series GPU with 8GB of VRAM and a Ryzen 5 or Intel i5 CPU with 16GB of RAM. This will handle basic Blender projects but expect some lag with complex scenes. For professionals or those who want the best, I would recommend builds with an RTX 3080 series GPU up to the RTX 5090 with 24GB VRAM, with an Intel i9 or Ryzen 9 CPU, 64GB RAM and multiple NVMe drives. This will deliver exceptional performance but at a much higher cost. Once you've picked your parts, you can either build a PC yourself using guides like Linus Tech Tips or have a store like Micro Center assemble it for you. The extra cost is worth it if you're unsure about handling delicate components or applying thermal paste. In short, building a PC for Blender is about understanding which parts impact your workflow the most. GPU for rendering, CPU for viewport and general tasks RAM for handling complex scenes and fast storage for quick loading. Use tiered options to fit your budget and leverage tools like Micro Center's Part Picker to ensure compatibility. Anyone can do this with a bit of guidance and the right build will make your Blender projects faster, more stable and more enjoyable. So yeah, that's all for today. I hope you found this video informative and if you want to buy a laptop instead for Blender, check out this video. I'll also put all the links to things I mentioned in this video in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.